Vanishing Point was an action film from 1971, focused around a car delivery driver, simply known as Kowalski. A former racer, police officer, and Vietnam vet with a troubled past, but driving had become his nirvana. He is hired to drive a white, supercharged 1970 Challenger RT440 from Denver to San Francisco, a trip of nearly 1,300 miles across four states. Leaving on a Saturday afternoon, the car is supposed to be delivered on Monday, but he makes a bet he can have it there on Sunday within 15 hours. Obviously, this would require some speeding, even though it was before the 55 mile an hour speed limit. It also didn't allow much time for rest, which he deals with by popping pills at the outset. His speeding quickly gets the attention of the police, initially motorcycle cops, but he makes a run for it, running one of the motorcycles off the road, and then doing a bit of off-roading and taking a jump. causing the second motorcycle to crash, escalating things into a multi-state manhunt. Events picked up on the police scanner by a blind DJ known as Super Soul, played by Cleavon Little, who some of you may know as the sheriff from Blazing Saddles. Well, raise my rent. And Super Soul uses the opportunity to turn Kowalski into a folk hero. Over the course of the trip, he runs into several colorful characters, including a lunatic in a Jaguar E-type convertible wearing a helmet, who tries to egg him on in several ways, including running him off the road. But it does turn into a race, that ends at a one-way bridge, with the Jaguar being totaled. Then he picks up a couple of guys whose 55 Chevy wagon is broken down. But they try to rob him and he quickly disposes of them. There is a philosophical snake catcher. Ain't that a fat one though? Now we'll get him in here. Thank you. And a girl riding a trail bike in the nude for some reason with the whole thing ending quite abruptly. It was supposed to have a spiritual element, with Kowalski evolving to a higher plane of existence at the end. Although his meeting with the death figure was cut from the original U.S. release, neither audiences nor critics found the ending all that enlightening, as the movie was often seen as nothing more than a guy racing across the desert to his ultimate doom. It had a limited theatrical release and faced much criticism, but after having better success in Europe, perhaps because they got an extended cut, it would make a return to the U.S. as a popular drive-in second feature to quickly become a cult classic, which would be boosted even further by its television premiere in 1976. And the Super Soul speech would get a following of its own, with parts of it ending up as lyrics in various songs over the next several decades. The cars used in the film were primarily stock 444 speed cars with heavy duty shocks added for the jumps. And there was a 383 automatic car that was used to keep the car more manageable when necessary. No actual supercharger was ever installed, but the sound of one was added in editing. Then the movie would be remade for TV in 1997 with Viggo Mortensen playing Jimmy Kowalski. This time around, he is to deliver a 70 Hemi Challenger from Albuquerque, New Mexico to Salt Lake City, Utah. But the destination changes to Boise, Idaho, when his ill, pregnant wife ends up in the hospital, changing his motivation to desperation to get to his wife. 
It too starts with two motorcycle cops and going off-road. But adds a gratuitous explosion. An obsessive cop was added to the mix to add pressure, who tries to catch Kowalski using his personal 1968 Charger. Takes a Mopar to catch a Mopar. But that does not end well for the Charger. And then the feds are brought in, followed by presumptions of gun running or something worse. And possible links with right-wing racist militia groups in Idaho. Meaning things have really gotten out of control. It's still got the snake catcher. A DJ making him out to be a hero. Things are not looking good for our man Kowalski, the lone wolf, the last American hero. And a girl on a motorcycle in the desert. But she had at least some clothes on, being made for TV and all. There was some random salt flats screwing off, under the pretense of driving tired, leading to a busted oil pan. Other updates included a scanner, night vision glasses, smoke grenades, and mounting police lights on the Challenger to get through a night roadblock. They're not stopping. Make a hole! Move it! Move those cars! Let them through! Make a hole! It was made to be more of a Mopar love story. Sweet. Hey, did you get the air grabber working? Oh, yeah. And the spiritualism was more Catholic-themed, but at least the ending was clearer. The remake fixed some of the complaints of the original film, although some aspects of it rubbed fans the wrong way. But if watching a classic muscle car race through the desert is your thing, either movie could be right for you. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment below and like and subscribe.